Hey, campers, happy spring. Long Happy time no spring. buzz, right? <laughs> How have you been keeping busy, Kian? What you been up to lately? Yeah, great question. Well, it's starting to get warmer. Daylight <laughs> savings definitely made a big difference for me. It's nice after all the camp work to get outside, see the bees are buzzing around my landlord's property. I know that. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's feeling I'm feeling good. How are yeah. you? I'm all right. I sad news. I was a horrible beekeeper last year. A lot of personal stuff going on. Didn't uh, dip into uh, the reservoir of help that is available at all bee clubs. And as a result, I my bees died over the winter because I just didn't take care of them. So um, starting fresh this year. Lesson learned. Thank you very much. Uh, what I do like is the rain. I love to hate it, but I'm liking it because I know in the long run, it's it's beneficial for all of us in California. Uh, let's hope um, we have a very uh, calm summer in in terms of fires, et cetera, right? And I'm yeah. loving I'm loving the smell of the the nectar flow right now. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's so great. so what's what do we got going on in the camp? Yeah, a lot of classes. This is a time of the year to take classes. Everybody's starting to get busy. The nukes are all ordered, hopefully, if you're getting nukes. Um, so we have a lot of great upcoming classes. We also have some program updates this last quarter that we'd love to share with you. So uh, we're going to have a fun meeting. And we also have an interview, too, right? Yeah, and that's yes. the Who is that with, Wendy? It is with our Journey Level Beekeeper, Sung Lee. He's from the East Bay and uh, NorCal Public Media interview. So it's a fun little interview. Awesome. Yeah, enjoy. So let's get started with some announcements. So we had this uh, announcement last video as well. We'd like to remind everyone this year we have class passes. So we have classes that are online. And if you have a class pass, then you get access to that class at no cost. And class passes are really pertinent to the certification program. So if you're a Honeybee Ambassador level, you get access to all of the classes online for the Honeybee Ambassador level. And it's easy to tell which ones are categorized in the Honeybee Ambassador level by looking at the course number. Course number will begin with HBAL, and then it would have a number after that. And it's the same thing for all the other levels as well. So for example, for journey level, um, you get access to all the classes, JL, and below as well. So the apprentice and honeybee ambassador level. So, and this is if you're a current candidate, or also if you have graduated with a certification at that level, you always have access every year to all the classes. Come hop on, ask questions if you have new questions, and just brush up if you need to. Um, so hopefully this is more accessible for everyone. And also quick note, when you are registering, it's still going to have a price there, even if you have a class pass, but just click register and it will skip the payment step. So don't worry if it doesn't zero it out for you. That's the way it's currently configured. You won't get charged. Also this year, upon some feedback, we have decided to give everyone the opportunity to go through one and a half beekeeping seasons by extending the certification deadline. So from the time you register, depending on the level that you're in, you have from one to two years and to take the exams and finish all of that. And if you need an extension, please reach out via office hours and we can help you out with that. Um, and so if you're currently in the program, we automatically extended your time by, for example, six months if you're an apprentice, because it used to be one year. And now it's one and a half years. And uh, there, there was an email sent about that too. So check your email from camp at ucdavis.edu if you'd like to go look back on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Be Health Hub, pretty exciting. This is a new initiative that was founded this year at UC Davis El Nino Bee Lab, which is our parent organization. And what the Be Health Hub does is it goes out to beekeepers and does a consulting service where they look at all the hives, typically in commercial operations, and they do an assessment on the general colony health. So they do testing like 
uh, hygienic testing, which is on the screen here, and I'll talk about a little bit about how that works. They do varroa mite uh, tests, they do uh, virus, virus tests, they do all these different types of tests. They gather all this information and generate reports. And uh, these reports can help commercial beekeepers understand where they are compared to the rest of the industry for that year. They also do lab testing. That, so you can mail in, for hobbyist beekeepers, you can mail in a sample of bees and you can get viral testing, you can get nosema testing, you could do varroa mite testing if you'd like to, but you should be able to do that yourself. Um, uh, so there's a lot of options for everyone. And this year so far, 14 commercial operations have been uh, have gone through the testing, have been consulted with 584 colonies and 237 mite washes. And specifically here, this is the liquid nitrogen test, these two photos. So it's pretty interesting. It's a way to test how hygienic a colony is. And it uses liquid nitrogen in to freeze brood. And then once they're frozen, the bees, if they're hygienic, they should go in, recognize the dead bees and remove them. So what the consultants do is they, they freeze brood and then they wait a certain amount of time and then they check on the right-hand side after a certain amount of time, how many of the brood were taken out by the other bees and disposed of properly. And on the right-hand side, that's exactly what you wanna see. All of the cells are empty, that's a hundred percent essentially. So that means that the bees are highly hygienic and you could use this, it's been proven to be a useful measure of how hygienic bees are. And it's useful to know how hygienic bees are because it help, that helps with pests and diseases. They'll clean themselves up. So a lot of exciting updates there and Bee Health Hub is expanding, changes to the database, changes to the website. Um, we are excited to provide more services to hobbyist beekeepers and commercial beekeepers in the coming year. Yeah, and I think you're going to be down doing some of that yourself next week, aren't you, Kion? Yeah, thanks yeah. for mentioning. Yeah, yeah, that'll be my first time joining the yeah. field team out yeah. there in the field. So Very cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll stay back and mind the shop. How's that sound? Yeah, I, I got. I, I, we're doing some uh, updating the study guide. I mean, the 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 guide that went out a month ago is most current. So what you find in the member portal right now is the most current version of the study guide. We are currently developing exam questions to reflect that study guide. You will know when we do study guide updates, when we release new versions of not only the study guides, but also of exam questions, through the Buzz newsletter. We will always communicate that to you. So right now, status quo, no new updates. So we're working on it behind the scenes. Exciting, yeah. That's the benefit of the program. Things are constantly being updated with new research. Yeah, it new has to be, so, yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you for your work with that. Yeah. And, that and thank you for um, all the volunteers. Working it, it's a team of volunteers for sure. And a couple of uh, individuals, especially uh, who uh, have done their master capstone in in this arena of uh, of of in, in this track of education and outreach. So if this is something that intrigues or interests you and you want to consider doing your capstone, uh, helping to develop curriculum, please reach out, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, we've got some important certification program dates coming up. We've got our next info session, July the 10th. Orientation always follows info, July the 24th. Office hours, please take advantage of that. We love to hear from you. And if the office hours don't work for you, just contact us, give us a call or send us an email. We love to hear from you. And also remember, we've got that big celebration coming up in November. Hope to see you there at the lab. Uh, we'll have lots of food and lots of fun. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm still looking forward mm -hmm. to that. As mm -hmm. we're closer, even though it's so far away. Mm -hmm. as sometimes, you know, yeah. Hard. And for the info session and orientation, um, if you don't want to wait until then, you just join the program. We have the recordings on the overview page. 
Um, so definitely check those out there. And uh, for the orientation, yes, so check there. Yeah, good point, good point. Um, upcoming classes, the website says it all. Let's go under classes. Uh, have a peek at what's up. You can register. And as Kian alluded to earlier, if you have a class pass, uh, just click right through. You won't be charged. Um, please check out the video library. It's astounding to me how much content we have been able to curate over the last couple of years. Go into the members tab and check out the YouTube channel. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, biosecurity and in, in beekeeping, yeah. meat making, everything yeah. you can think of. There's yeah. guest lectures, there's the core classes, all the recordings are there, as yeah. Wendy mentioned. So yeah. it's a great asset to go back on, even yeah. if you're not in the program. That's yeah. one of the benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and, and April, uh, just check it out. We've got a lot of wonderful lectures coming up, a lot of classes, uh, pollinator and plants, learn how to install a honeybee package. Alina, our director, Dr. Alina Nino, will be doing a guest lecture on Monday, April the 15th at 7 p.m. on Honeybee Nutrition, perfect time of year. So I hope to see you logging on for that webinar, that guest lecture. And again, if you can't make it, they're always recorded. So, and are you interested in learning how to graph, raise your own queens, you know, Northern California? Check us out. There's a couple of, only a couple of seats left, unfortunately, but the Queen Rearing Technique short course is on and it's from April the 20th to the 21st at Davis in person. We hope to see you there. And the guest lectures are available to not only members of the program, but also the public. So yeah. if you're a member of the public, check that out. It's going to be yeah. available at no cost. Yep. Yeah, and exploring beekeeping again on the 4th of May, managing for Varroa. This one I'm pretty excited about because our Bee Health Hub team will be facilitating that class. So we will have the experts in the field talking about how to manage for Varroa. And I'm guessing we'll even get an opportunity to see a hygienic assay live at the lab that day. So hopefully we can see you at the lab for that as well. Uh, yeah, and just check back on all of those remote classes that are available to you. And if it doesn't work for you in terms of timing, just know that it's either already recorded and in the YouTube library now, or it will be soon. Yeah, uh, all about Varroa online. And then at Davis, if you are interested in learning more about instrumental insemination from the experts in the lab, we have a very cool opportunity for you. Please consider joining us on June the 1st for an intro to II all day with Dr. Alina Nino and Lauren Russert, who is PhD in training at this moment. We hope to see you there. Yeah, just and on the right. Mm -hmm. Checking the schedules, right? Yeah. Yeah, always up there. The yeah. whole year, all the classes for the whole yeah. year are up there. So even past June for the quarter after that, the classes are up there. So feel yeah. free to register even now. Yeah. And I just want to mention the the photo on the right hand side. That is actually a bat um, house that was built uh, for for house for for bats. And so you'll learn about homes and gardens for pollinators. Uh, from Art Ando in the Creating Gardens and Homes for Pollinators class on June 8th. But that's a great one. That's a new addition to the curriculum that uh, in the last couple of years, and it has come a long way. And it's, it's, a, it's a great class where you learn very broad understanding of what you can do for pollinators in many different respects. So definitely check that one out as well.
Yeah, so let's take a minute. Actually, I think it's maybe a minute and a half to enjoy our member spotlight with Sung Lee. And he's being interviewed by uh, the um, NorCal Public Media. Beekeeping has been a really exciting journey. Some bees are docile, some bees are aggressive and defensive. I have been rearing bees that are docile and gentle so that I can work without any protection. If you calm and gentle with them, they will not, there's no reason for them to come and sting you. We have to open up the hive and then inspect frame by frame what are they doing, what they need, or whether they're sick. So it is my job as a keeper to check them out and then fill the blanks of what they need. I have to really keep up with them. These guys are definitely thinking about swarming. If it's needed, then I add boxes, put them to work. So, uh-uh, you're not leaving, get to work. I enrolled at UC Davis, California Master Beekeepers Program. That was the game changer. It emphasized on how important these bees are, then also advocating not to use much of a chemical. Try to find the alternative, especially weed killer, pesticide. These are really affecting these bees. Lifespan is getting shorter and shorter. And it was helping me counting the mites. I have five grandkids. I love to get them involved what the grandpa is doing, especially bees. I don't want them to be afraid of it. Yeah. I have them just get familiar with it, get close to the bees. I ask them to help me with the bottling the honey. That's their best part. Beekeeping, the more I learn, the deeper it gets. Welcome back. So in the California Master Beekeeper Program, the program is successful because it is built by the members. Yeah. And so any feedback you have, we would greatly appreciate. There is a survey link in the description. Uh, anything about this video or about the program in general, general or what you're looking to learn, really anything, uh, we do review that on a regular basis. So thank you for your feedback. And with that, for the season of spring. Be, Be well. well. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye.